Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, what, what, hold on. You fucked me up. I was going to give him a proper introduction. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, what are we whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, apparently, Lunchbox wants to give your introduction this hold evening. Hold on. Hold on. Let me pull up what I need to my, my introduction. Well, you're not even ready. You knew this was coming. Ugh, you dickbag. <laughs> you dickbag. bag of dicks. Like, no, go to the interview. No, you really Anyways, go, Sword. Now that I ruined that lunch lunchbox segue, I apologize. Hi, Brent Albright. Welcome, <laughs> welcome back to the Wrestling Mayhem Hi, Show. Hi, hello. <laughs> I can't hear nobody. Um. What's that? Hello. All right, I, I'll cover it. Uh, well, we have Brent Albright on the line. Uh, how you doing tonight, Brent? Good. How are you guys? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, of course, uh, Brent Albright, uh, a past guest on the show, uh, I think early last year, um, after seeing you in IWC for a bit uh, locally here, and uh, and uh, happened to uh, be up in New York City to see you win your uh, NWA championship at uh, Ring of Honor uh, in the August. Oh. You guys were at that show? Uh, I was, and a uh, fan of the show, Mad Mike, is from up there in the Bronx. Oh, cool, yeah, that, uh, that was an awesome night. It really was. <laughs> it was a surprise for me because I didn't, I hadn't looked into who the card was, and uh, to see, well, friend of the show, Brent Albright, and an NWA title uh, championship. I, I did, I wasn't aware that NWA was doing uh, affiliations with ROH at the time. Yeah, you know, uh, that that's something that they've been working on for a while. Was was trying to get a relationship with uh, with NWA, and uh, you know, I, I think that uh, it helped for both companies. You yeah. know. Are they still running that uh, sort of promotion? Uh, I think so. I don't really know what's. Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on. I know that uh, you know, just some uh, you know some kind of circumstances with our rates that uh, Adam Pierce had to you know they had to uh, you know they had to release Adam Pierce. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know what else is going on with NWA and uh, and our wage. Mm -hmm. But anyways, you won it in a fantastic match. Uh, I believe I believe you got a pretty good crimson mask that match uh, at at the uh, good old Hammerstein Ballroom. Uh, how was it to to win uh, uh, the NWA title? Was it with such history like that? That was awesome. You know, being being able to make history uh, in New York by winning the NWA title uh, was I mean, it was amazing. You know, the the fans that night had so much energy. Uh, you know, we were we were early on in the card. I think we were like fourth in the card. I mean, you know, we were in a pretty good spot. Uh, I thought the uh, I thought the build for the match was was really good, and you know, it just overall the uh, the whole atmosphere for that night was 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 awesome. It was just it really was. Excellent, excellent. And uh, and you had it. You had. For a good run for uh for at least two months before uh, losing losing it back to Pierce like you you know how how was that traveling around defending that? Do what? Uh, I'm sorry, your phone you're, you're breaking up on me a little bit. <laughs> I think we had phone trouble last time too. Um, yeah. Uh, what, what was it like to be you know traveling around? I saw you had uh, matches defending against guys like like uh, Dick Murdoch who was just let go by the WWE. I uh, I think down towards Texas or something. And uh, you know the defenses all over the country with that. I imagine you defended it more than just at ROH, right? Yeah, I, I did. I did a match with. Uh, I defended it against Go Shizaki at ROH. Uh, I defended it against uh, Trevor Murdoch in uh, in Texas with NWA. I defended it against Adam Pierce in Mexico City. Um, and then we had another had another match against Adam Pierce in Philadelphia. Excellent. So yeah, I mean it was you know. That's awesome, you know, mm -hmm. getting to do, especially getting to go to Mexico, because I'd never been to Mexico. And, uh, you know, I got the Montezuma's Revenge in Mexico, which was nice. Uh, I was sick, sick for like eight days. You know, I got sick. Uh, whatever I brought back was pretty contagious. I got sick. My wife got sick. Both my kids got sick. My in-laws got sick. My oh. brother-in-law and sister-in-law got sick. Their kids got sick. I mean, everybody was sick. So you spread it around so, pretty good, huh? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was only there for a day. I think I... I think I accidentally had a, uh, I think I had an ice cube and a soda that I drank, and I think that's what did it. <laughs> no, Adam Pierce even got sick. Uh, who was that? Adam Pierce, Adam Pierce got Adam sick Pierce too. Even got sick. <laughs> wow. Well, there's a lesson learned there. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, I'm going to get into a little. We have uh, some uh, fan, some uh, fan questions. I'm going to get into here now. 
uh, from Mad from Mad Mike, who did see you uh, with me get win that uh, championship belt. Um, one thing he asked is, what was it like to be able to interact with Larry Sweeney and ROH? Which I, I believe we talked a lot in our last interview uh, about uh, about uh, Larry Sweeney and you working with him in ROH. Right. Well, um, you know, Larry Sweeney, I think, is, is very talented. Uh, is very talented at what he does, and uh, you know, I, I I think as far as managers go, and, and as many places I've wrestled, I think Larry Sweeney is probably the best manager I've come across and I've seen in a long time. You know. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent, and. Uh... And, and I had a personal question for you. Are we ever going to see a dance-off between you and Larry Sweeney? A dance-off? Yes. No, you don't want to see a dance-off between me and Larry Sweeney. No, no, you don't want to see that. That'd be bad. That, that's worse than Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. That'd be pretty bad. You'd be surprised. Hentai uh, put up a pretty good dance-off fight with him. You, you, remember, uh, you remember Jerry, Sw- Jerry Springer on Dancing with the Stars? Yeah, it'd be worse than that. Yeah, it'd be pretty bad. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> a, uh, also, from Mad Mike, he says, The match uh, you had with Adam Pierce in New York was amazing. Uh, what did it feel like to win the belt? And uh, that was held by such greats as Dusty, Rick, and, the, and uh, Harley. All right, repeat the last part of that question. Uh, what was it like to win the belt that, that had been held by such greats like Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, and uh, Harley Race? He asks. Yeah, you know... First of all, you know, that match in, in New York was was awesome for me. I, I hope it was as awesome for the fans as it was mm-hmm. for me. And everybody that, you know, everybody that keeps telling me it was good and all, I, I appreciate that so much because it's, it really was, that was a special match and had a special night for me. And, and the fact that, you know, I got to, uh, got to win a belt or, or win a title that has been held by guys like Harley Race and, and the Briscoes and, and Giant Baba and, and Ric Flair and, and Steamboat, Dusty Rose, I mean, all those guys. I mean, that, you know, it, that's amazing. I mean, not very many people are going to have the opportunity to wrestle and win the NWA world title. And I got that opportunity and I, and I, and I did win that. And it was amazing. And it probably been one of the most amazing things to cap it off was I got to, uh, I got to meet Ric Flair, uh, Couple, you know, of course, I had met Ric Flair in WWE, but you know, we were—he was on Raw, I was on SmackDown, so I didn't really get to—I never really got to know or, or get to sit down and meet Ric Flair. So I actually, this time, I got to—I got to meet and talk with Ric Flair uh, in in Robstown, Texas, um, a couple weeks ago. Well, I guess it was about a month ago, I guess now. Um, whenever they induct, when the NWA inducted Ric Flair into the Hall of Fame. And, I mean, that was awesome. That was just the cherry on the cake. It, you know, there's just the, the, the icing on the cake for uh, for my entire NWA experience there. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Matt Mike also wants to know, uh, do you think uh, you could see uh, yourself going back to one of the big two anytime soon, or are you going to be uh, 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 more looking at the indies and end, maybe another NWA title reign soon? You know, I, I'm keeping all my options open. I would love... Uh, you know, I would love to go back and get another shot with uh, with WWE. So, you know, if anybody knows Johnny, he's listening. Yeah, I'm open. I'm, I'm open for bookings, trial matches, <laughs> whatever you got. Um, you know, and uh, you know, I, I would love to work for. You know, I would love to work for TNA. You know, I, I, I that's a company I've worked for one time. I, I had to do an explosion match back in the day. And you know, I, I, you know, I see a lot. I know a lot of guys that work there. And, and, you know, and as far as the NWA thing goes, you're sure I'd, I'd love to have another shot at the, uh, another shot with the NWA title belt. And, uh, you know, so I'm mean, going to keep my options open. You know, right now I'm, I'm training really hard and, uh, you know, just really trying to stay in good shape so that, you know, because as I get older, it's a little bit harder to stay in good shape. And so mm-hmm. I really want to try to be in the best shape I can be so that all those doors still stay open because, you know, this is a very, you know, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a very physical business, and it's a very, you know, physique, physique-wise, you know, you have to look good, and, and that's what it's all about, especially if you want to go to the E, you know? Definitely, definitely. And speaking speaking of, uh, I, I, I listened uh, recently to our previous interview, and you mentioned uh, 
uh, uh, wanting to work a, a, a submission or a cage match with CM Punk sometime at WrestleMania would be a, would be a, a, a big uh, plus for you. Uh, what what do you? Because you you won your title, a pretty major title, around the same time that uh, CM Punk was uh, got one uh, in uh, WWE. What was it like for you know to have somebody you've worked with uh, you know get get a, get a, the big one about uh, the same time as you? Man, you know, I, I could have been happier for Punk, you know, I mean, I know that he's, you know, he's worked just as hard as anybody else, and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, for him to go out there, and especially in this business, because Punk's not a big guy, I mean, Punk's a good-sized guy, but he's not a big guy in this business, he, he falls along the same lines that I do, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, for him to go out there and say, hey, you know what, I'm going to be something in this business, and I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it without steroids, and I'm going to do it without taking drugs, and if I hurt, I hurt, and that's just the business, and that's the way it is. You know, and, and for him to, you know, go into a company like that with all the odds stacked against him, and, you know, and then getting over with the fans, and becoming a guy that they put their uh, their world title on, and, and being a draw for that company, you know, you, you couldn't be happy for a guy. I mean, I think that's awesome. You know, that's, that's something we all hope that we get a chance to do as, as workers and, and he's accomplished that and if they were to turn around and, and cut him tomorrow or if he were to say hey I'm done wrestling tomorrow I mean he's got that and nobody can take that away from him and, and he's had an excellent career for the short you know two three years he's been up there excellent. do you uh, do you want to update your Wrestlemania dream match any oh my Wrestlemania dream match what you know I don't know I you know as long as it's main event at WrestleMania, you know, it really doesn't matter who it is. You know, main event at WrestleMania, it doesn't get any bigger than that. It really mm-hmm. doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know, to be in the main event against, you know, against somebody with, uh, where the story's been built well and the anticipation is there and the fans are foaming at the mouth ready to watch you work. I mean, you know, it doesn't matter who it's against. Hell, it could be against a, it could be against a, a broomstick or a steel chair. It doesn't <laughs> matter. I mean, it's WrestleMania, you know? Exactly. Definitely. I'm sure you'd make that broomstick look good. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that broomstick would be selling for that broomstick. <laughs> Hold on a second. Sorry, we're having some technical issues here. Um, um, hey, man, we did have another question from Mad Mike. Uh, he asks, uh, what did it mean to you to win the uh, OVW title after uh, Matt Capitelli had forfeited? What, is, what was it like for me to win it? Yeah. You know, it was, uh, actually, you know, my, my second OVW title was, uh, I felt was a little more special than the first one. You know, the first one was an idea that I had pitched, and, uh, and it, we didn't get to really work it through because, uh, you know, a couple of guys that were in the, that were in the storyline got pulled up, and, and it never really got to unfold, and it was just kind of a rush thing. I, I didn't really feel like I was ready for it at the time, and the, my second go around with it, um, you know, it was not my choice to be to be OVW champion. Some, you know, with the circumstances that happened uh, with Matt Castelli and then all that, you know, Paul Heyman said, "Hey, I'm gonna give you the ball, um, and we're gonna build." You know, I want you to run as my lead heel, and I want Punk to run as my lead baby face. You guys have a good chemistry. You know, and he gave me the ball and he gave me a chance to 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 work and gave me a chance to do what I do and, and it and it worked out great. Excellent. Uh Mayhem Missy here, who's also in the chat room, wanted to ask uh, if you'd ever worked in Japan. Yeah, yeah, back in two thousand three I worked for Noah. I went over for mm-hmm. a month. Excellent. So yeah. And that was uh, quite the experience. Excellent. And uh I got some more here from the chat room. Uh, one big question is, especially for us locally, where are we ever going to see you in uh, IWC again? Hey, you know what? That's up to the IWC promoters. You know, <laughs> the, uh, I have, uh, you know, he, you know, the promoters there have said, hey, they want to bring me back in, but then they never follow up on it. And I, I give them calls, and they don't answer their phones, and they don't return emails. So, you know, that's up to them. You know, I, I, I would love to wrestle in IWC, and, mm-hmm. you know, I enjoyed my time when I was there, and I, I really enjoyed the city of Pittsburgh, and so, you know, if, you know, if anybody, not Pittsburgh, yeah, it's 
Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It's Pittsburgh ish. Yeah, it's suburbs. Yeah, it's, it's, what is it? it's Elizabeth. It's Elizabeth Town, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't think any wrestling yeah, so. actually happens in Pittsburgh, ex- except for us. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I really enjoy. I enjoy. I enjoy going there. And I enjoy all the fans and, and stuff. So yeah, it, it's really. Uh, you know, I, w- I would like to. I'd like to come back and work if they'll have me. You know, I don't, I don't know why they won't. I think I hear my flights out of uh, Tulsa are kind of expensive, so. <laughs> well, I think if any of the fans have anything to say about it, uh, it will. It will be seeing you back soon. Um, well, we hope. We hope so. Definitely. Um. And uh, another question is, uh, you know, what what's changed for you uh, career wise uh, since the last year and a half you've been on here? Like, uh, where where else have you been other than uh, ROH and, and uh, NWA? Actually, that the one thing that's changed career wise for me is I've slowed down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've taken less bookings and really just kind of trying to do the ones that I want to do, the ones I think that will get me uh, get me a little more. Uh, Give me a little more press, and make me a little more appealing to you know WWE or TNA, mm-hmm. and uh, you know because I got a I've got a six month old baby, so I don't you know I like to try to be at home when I can, but of course at the same time you know you got to work you know you got to work to make money, and mm-hmm. so I think it's uh, you know that that's been the main thing I've I've been able to you know really talk and negotiate and and get what I need so that I don't have to be gone as much and just get to really do the shows that I want to do mm-hmm. and what's, what's been your feeling uh, working in ROH the last uh, the last couple of years what's what? what what's been your feeling uh, from working in ROH the last couple of years um, as opposed to uh, other other groups out there you know I like ROH I like the the atmosphere that ROH brings mm-hmm. and I like uh, I like a lot of things that uh, that they have the production value. I mean, ROH puts on a show like none other. Mm-hmm. But I, the, the problem I have with ROH is they give fans too much, in my opinion. And you know, uh, I would hope that that you know, I, and, and I know that everybody's been working on that, and and I, and I think that's something that you know, it's a team effort to change because. We find that we go into a lot of towns and the attendance drops because, you know, what could we possibly do to top what we just did, mm-hmm. you know, in that mm-hmm. town? And, and I think that hurts the, I think that hurts the company a little bit. And I mean, we have a, a very hardcore group of fans that come out and watch, but for us to expand and, and make the company more appealing to different markets, it, you know, we almost kind of have to start over and then try to re-educate the fans so that we're not having to do as much to get them to react the way we want that way. Whenever something big comes along, we really get the reaction out of it that we need Mm -hmm. instead of, you know, a thousand, instead of a thousand different things getting, you know, getting just crapped on. Yeah. I definitely noticed uh, even from my one ROH live experience, it just, there's a lot of near finishes, like a lot of near finishes. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's, you know, and I, I hate saying this, but, you know, because I don't, I don't want to mislead anybody to thinking, you know, there's a term out there called the ROH style, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I I don't wrestle that ROH style because I'm, I'm 245, 250 pounds, <laughs> yeah. and a lot of these guys are right at 200 pounds, you know, some of them are a lot of, uh, you know, some of them are under 200 pounds. And they can move fast, and they're a little more smooth. And I, I don't move like that, you know. So, uh, so no triple so, moon salts for Brent Albright yeah. in the near future, right? Do what? No triple moon salts for Brent Albright in the near future, right? Yeah, there's, there's <laughs> no triple moon salt for Brent Albright in anybody's future. So, if you come into ROH to see me do that, you, you might as well mm-hmm. not come because that ain't gonna happen. And I tease it. And, I tease it. And, and Frank. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> and frankly, that's one of the things that surprised me seeing you in the card in that show, uh, because my my exposure to ROH, and you know, granted, I am sort of a new fan to Ring of Honor. Uh, most of the things I know, I know from Lunchbox here on the show, uh, is uh, is that that kind of style. And I know you're more of a ground wrestler. In that contrast, uh, would, would be amazing. But if, if anything, it brought something different to a show that is that you know style. Well, you know, and, and that's why I don't like to use the term um, of the 
ROH style mm-hmm. because there there's two kinds of wrestling out there. Mm-hmm. There's good wrestling and there's shitty wrestling. You know? <laughs> and you know, no matter what you do, no matter how many flips and flops you do, if you're not going out and you're not telling your story, you're not getting the point you're not getting the point of what you're doing out there across. If you're not letting the you know, when you're doing moves, if you're just doing moves to do moves and you're not doing them for a reason, then it's shitty. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. just all there is to it. And, you know, you've got to, you know, people have to realize. And if you educate your fans to like shitty wrestling, then when you give them good wrestling, they're not going to recognize it. They think the good wrestling is shitty. And I know that that sounds really weird, but that's just <laughs> the way it is. You have to educate your fans to like good wrestling, good storytelling, getting, you know, the most out of doing the less. That way it builds so that every time you wrestle, you do just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more, and you come out and then you get to have these awesome matches instead of every match on the card seeming like a main event match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool, but, you know, if you give the people a main event match in the opener, how's the main event match going to top that? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, and I think that's a lot of what sometimes, it's been much better over the last, you know, over the last six months. But uh, that's a lot of times what you fall into is, you know, everybody wants to go out and steal the show, and that's just not the case. Sometimes that's not your spot that night to steal the show. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, one one thing I can attribute to ROH with its rabbit fan base, and obviously a different style than we're seeing on TV from week to week on the you know the quote big two. Um, you, you can attribute a lot to ECW with bringing the hardcore style. Uh, to America and getting that rabid fan base. Do you, do you think that this, you know, this whole uh, Fast and Furious style is going to kind of fat out, kind of like the ECW has? Um, no, I think there's a place for it. Mm-hmm. I just don't think that there's a place for it on every match on the card. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's it's one. Of the, I mean, that's the reason why there's only you know, that's the reason why when you go watch a, a boxing card. If your main event's probably going to be a heavyweight match, or if your main event's a light heavyweight match, that'll be the only light heavyweight match on the card because there's you have to have different styles of matches on the card for the people to stay interested. You know, I mean, if you had a card full of guys that were 250 pounds that were slow and lumbering, and you know they're just waiting to throw one big punch, and that's going to get old after after two matches. That's why you have to throw the the phantom weights in there, and the light weights in there, and the you know so they can get in there and and uh, you know, get in there and, and give a little speed when it's time for some speed, and then you build your car to, to your big guys. And mm-hmm. that's, you know, and that's why I think, you know, every match needs to have a different feel and a different style to it and, and flow with the car so that everything everything flows good. And, you know, and like I said, it, it's been so much better the last two or three months, it, 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 but it's a team effort. Everybody has to work together. Excellent. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking in the chat room to see if we got any more questions. Um, <laughs> Mad Mike asks, uh, uh, what do you think of TNA? Honestly. Honestly. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest. I I have not watched a whole lot of TNA. I mean, I know what I read on you know various uh, news reports about how they you know about how they uh, you know how their storylines are, are bad and the booking is bad and. And blah blah blah, but you know what? I I don't I don't watch it, so I can't tell. I can't make that opinion, uh, you know, because I've got you know at that time of night when it comes on on Thursday nights, I'm usually packing to get ready to go out of town on Friday, so I don't really have a whole lot to sit down and watch it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know a lot, you know, it can't be that bad because I know a lot of guys on like on their on their roster and they're all excellent workers, so. You know, if they're still if they're if they're doing house shows and the boys are getting paid, I mean that's 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 the good thing, you know. I mean, I'm sure they're not making what you know they could be making in WWE, but it's a different company, you know. I, I think the six sided ring thing is pretty cool. I think it's a different look, you know. But on the other hand, it's you know wrestling is pro wrestling, and I think if you try to change things too much, you're you know. You might get, you know, you might turn some people off, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, it is what it is. I, it, you know, from what I've seen, a couple of matches on TNA, and what I've seen of it, I like. You know, yeah. there's a few things that I didn't like, but for the most part, I like the show. 
So, of course, I didn't really understand what was going on in the storyline because it was one show out of a thousand that they run. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's pro wrestling. You know, I love pro wrestling. So, to me, it's probably good. Um, and another, well, from the chat room, do you do you prefer being the good guy or the bad guy out there? Who's the real Brent Albright? I enjoy, I enjoy being a heel, mm-hmm. but after a while, you know, I was, you know, I was ready to be a baby face, and I'm enjoying being a baby face. So I like them, I like them both. I mean, it's it's still it's still wrestling, and and right now, uh, for the role that I'm in, the company needs a baby face that can sell and get some sympathy, and so I, I enjoy I enjoy doing that, you know. It's good to see the, you know, it's good to see a big guy get his ass kicked a little bit and, and, and transform so that he can make a comeback, you know? Excellent. Well, that's all we got for you, Brent, tonight. Uh, is there anything you, anything coming up you want to talk about before we let you go? Uh, we've, got, we've got ROH this weekend in, uh, in Connecticut and New Jersey. Uh, NWA coming up in Canada next week, you know, on the 1st. Uh, we got some NWA TV tapings coming up in, uh, coming up in November, and then of course, uh, you know, the end of, end of November, the beginning of December, ROH, and then big ROH, uh, final battle weekend in New York City on, uh, December 26th and 27th. Excellent. And so it, that's all I really got. Excellent. And where can they find you up on the web? Uh, MySpace. You know, uh, but all, uh, MySpace dot com backslash put all but I'm trying to update it. It hasn't been updated in a while, but um, I've got some new pictures and stuff that I want to throw on there and, and things like that. So that's where you can go to find out about me. Excellent. Well, thank you a lot, Brent Albright, uh, for being on the show again. And uh, we hope we see you in Pittsburgh. If not, if not I've seen maybe that ROA show coming through in uh, next year. Man, that sounds great. Um, so and we'll, we promise uh, we'll, we'll see you guys later. Appreciate the time. No problem. We promise we'll let you uh, chop Doc Remedy again. Awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> awesome. He'll, he'll hear that later because he left the room. Thanks a lot, man. Awesome. Good. All right. Bye. All right, guys.